welcome to Touch by Prayer. It is Tuesday, and that means another awesome and fantastic interview with my guests. So today, I am super, super excited. I have international singer-songwriter Daniela Ayon. She is also a woman's life coach, and there's something that God's been stirring the waters in in her, and that is to help her take women to breathe life into their dreams, into their destinies, and watch it come to fruition. See, this is going to be a move. There's a lot of entrepreneurs out there, so if that is you, definitely you want to just tune in. Um, start to share this if you can start to share that we are live because it is going to be a super fun time tonight. So I would like to introduce Daniela Ayon. Thank you so much. Welcome for, to coming on Touch by Prayer. Thank you so much for coming on. Hi, how are you? I am good. I'm so excited you're here. This is going to be so much fun. First of all, you are actually calling from Australia. So you are from yes. the down, down under. <laughs> yeah, we are the land down under, and um, we just want to thank you for um, all your support over in the USA, which has been amazing. And the alignment that's happened between Australia and, and the United States has been an absolute blessing because I can honestly say um, most of the support has come from the United States. So, yay! I'm I'm just excited to even have connected with you a couple of months ago. I think it was, and yes. we had so much in common that we thought we need to talk about this to everybody else. Uh huh. Uh huh. Absolutely, because God is doing something. I mean, once this Wonder Woman movie hit, it was like that was it. It was like game on. <laughs> And so God has been like doing some some new things. So let's talk a little bit. Let's do a little backstory about you because um, first of all, I do want to talk about that you are actually nominated right now for an award, for yes. an international award. If I'm not, yes, yeah. yes it is. It's, um, well, it's for world world music, which is um, clearly where my direction is is to go into the heart of Europe uh, with healing music and inspirational music. And here in South Australia, we have uh, awards uh, every year, and I'm under the uh, world category. So that is amazing for me. Uh, being out of the industry for so long, um, God has just been able to bless me with a nomination. So I'm very, very excited, and um, can't wait to see what the outcome is going to be well i'm expecting a very good outcome to be quite honest yeah. <laughs> I, i've been speaking that since you and i have been um speaking <laughs> because yes it is time it is your time it is definitely your time so yeah, yeah i think it's um it's going to be quick and it's going to be super super fun so why don't we just why don't you talk a little bit about the song because I think that the the song is kind of a precursor to how God has kind of moved you into this new place. Yeah, look, I got to say um, that song uh, was very spontaneous in the sense a lot of my songs have been coming in my night sleep. So I hear the music, I get up around three or four in the morning and I seem to just write it all down and the the melody just kept going on in my head I am who I am and I'm like wow okay but I really wanted to get you know in that secret place and hear what is it that God was really saying about that and it was all to do with the ageless it was like in a sense that he kept showing himself in every part of the word of God it wasn't just in one part it was throughout all ages, I am who I am. And even in this present moment, we as a collective and we as creative beings have to know who God is in order for us to live out this amazing life that has already been pur purposely made for us already, you know. And when I did it, I didn't have anyone to sort of write the music because I don't write music. I just hear the melody. So my good friend came over and I said, I really want that. Um, if you remember that movie, uh, what is it? The one, the Egyptian uh, with Joseph and all that kind of thing. I love all that kind of sound because it brings, it brings it back to my, my, my heritage and my roots where I grew up. And I said, make it that kind of sound. So he did it in like three seconds. I was like, wow. And he left me the track and I was able to, 
do the song. So I did it and then I had another friend who said, let's put it out, let's put it out on the radio. And I thought, oh, hold on a minute, like really? And so he fixed it up and it really was the beginnings of something for me because it'd been such a long time um, not being able to express my musical uh, creativity at all because it'd been suppressed for so long because of past disappointments and a major, major neglect and rejection from obviously industry and other people. It made me um, not want to do anything. So this song was the beginning stages of really activating so many people. And I told you, uh, uh, many people I've spoken to have said to me, it has something that makes me go into a place where I feel like I, I'm I'm searching again or I'm really having a moment of awakening. Like it is talking to them. And everything that I write about is always to the person. It's always the message to them. It sometimes doesn't really have um, a sense of my life, of what's happened to me, but it actually is the message to them about what they can do in their life to change their situation right now and move into the new thing, which is pretty awesome. Well, I think it's super, I think it's really important that, um, that sometimes God does do a new thing. And sometimes we don't understand what he's doing. You know, there's that scripture. It says, behold, I do a new thing. Do you not see it? And it's funny because we've been hearing that scripture so much. And people are always like, oh, and they're still expecting the old thing. And it's like, uh, hello, new. <laughs> it doesn't look like the old. It is a new thing. And I think that's that's part of the, 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 uh, the thing about God is he's always creating. And so because he gave you this song, he brought the, the person to help you write it, to help you compose it, to help you bring it to life. See, that's the thing about God. When God puts a dream inside of us, he's going to send others along to help us to birth it. He's going to send midwives. He's going to send prophets. The prophets are the midwives. So he's going to send the midwives to help deliver it. But he's also going to send, well, like if you're pregnant in, the, um, in, uh, in, in reality, you go to a doctor because you need to take prenatal vitamins. You have to, yes. be check, there has to be checkups because you have to make sure that the pregnancy is going smoothly. And so God will send people to give you the proper medicine to help you to nurture that baby until it's ready to be birthed. He'll send you people to do checkups to make sure that that baby is about to, that it's growing at a proper place. And then of course the midwife is going to just come and say, okay, push <laughs> I think that's the biggest thing is in yes. this season, we have to push because there are people who are pregnant with visions and, and destinies and they're, they're they're going to unfortunately they're going to lose the baby in the womb so it's like it's up to like yourself I mean you're you're such a, an advocate for women to help yes. them to push so from this from this beautiful song an empowering song um, did that actually start like the um, the mentoring that you do, that you coach, you help to coach people? Well, I, I, I'll tell you a little bit of uh, uh, just a very quick background. <laughs> Carly, who's on right now, my goodness, she's been my midwife, let me tell you, because I mm -hmm. had to have that um, because there's been times where um, it's been horrible and it's been dark. So let's all be honest about that. There's been a dark night of the soul where we have wanted to give up. But in that time, a shift happens where you need to just really take hold of your destiny. And I've always been in the music industry, but I knew that being an entrepreneur was something that I really had a passion about because I started my own business when I was about 17. And that's been uh, something that's always evolved and grown. What happens when God really um, takes a hold of you and says, I'm about to rewire, I'm about to reinvent you and I'm about to resurrect you, literally mm -hmm. means a there's a formation that's going to happen throughout your body, a transformation that you can't actually ignore because if we ignore it, we then have to go through that again and we get a little bit older and we can't be bothered. Let's just be honest with that as well. And as women, um, if some of us have had children and 
or we've been married for a little while and, and we know that there's something stirring up inside of us that we know there has to be a rewiring. And that is the rewiring of our mind, renewing of our mind, and also the reinvention. That we're actually able to start a whole new canvas. And I had to start mm -hmm. a whole new canvas. I came from a, a, a pop music industry background, and that was not who I was anymore. And I couldn't live out of my early 20s anymore. I'd become a mature woman, and I needed to have that moment with God where I, I really just understood that God was wanting to do something that was going to activate women uh, who were actually in a place of this restraining, this suppression, where they couldn't be who they really desired to be artistically, whether they're writers, painters, musicians, whether they're speakers, they just did, weren't able to just allow themselves to, to come out of into that greatness right so I had a friend who helped me out start an online program and and that's how I entered into the online industry and I was so apprehensive about it because I really didn't believe any of it I didn't think that anyone would ever even look at it right and and I thought who's me to, for anyone to even listen to what I've got to say like whatever you know <laughs> he was very adamant with me and he really shook me up and he said to me you need to create it. You need to put it forward because your music has to um, be part of helping and teaching people. And I thought, wow, I've never heard of this before. How could my music ever help anyone in a, on, a, on a mentoring kind of thing? So it actually took me nine months. This was three years ago. Nine months to create a program online, video it myself, edit it myself, do all the audio. It was horrendous. I wanted to give up. After day two, I said to my mentor, I said, you know what, you're just being silly with me. I, I think this is just to test me. I don't want to do this. And, and he basically said to me, if you don't do this, everybody who's waiting on the other side is actually not going to get what they deserve out of it. So stop thinking about yourself. <laughs> That's literally what he said. Don't worry about you. You just, you just know that you have to create this in order for the other people on the other side of the bridge who are actually waiting for some of this. And so it was called Unveiling Esther. And unveiling Esther was all about Esther coming into her prominence, into her influence, into what she was called to do to save her people. And she did it with an absolute elegance. She did it with style. She did it with um, humility, which is something that I've learned from ancient Jewish wisdom. Humility is actually having a platform but holding the space for others. So it doesn't mean that you're the only one there doing this thing. It is many more of us. And that's what got me excited at the fact that I started to get my keyboard out and just play music. I was just playing whatever and sounds started to come out. So I was doing these vocalizations. So I added that into the program. I then had, you know, a, a major interventions happen where I put up a few video clips and then they just went viral and people started to catch on and said, do you have a program? And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I, I do. I have a program. And so then it became an amazing group of over 350 women in a private group who have gone through this Esther program, who have an, an activated um, parts of themselves that were lying dormant. Now, this was uh, obviously three years ago and the, the evolution of it has grown. And then I decided to say, well, if this music is really um, affecting people and if this mentoring is really helping them to engage in who they are and their destiny, I need to take it to the next level. I need to take it to the next level of professionalism. So I, I fasted for 40 days and I've only ever done two 40-day 40 day fast is that what you call it 40 days mm -hmm. 40 mm -hmm. days or 40 weeks or whatever it was i, know I think, that. It's, I think it was 40 days <laughs> yeah it was a long long time right mm -hmm. and um um and, and then i i i made a clear conscious decision that in that time of fasting and prayer that god was going to open a supernatural door for me to work with a professional producer uh and that was that was my heart's call right so after the 40 day fast it actually happened there was no joke I had um, a connection with a, a, a person in Sydney who is actually Jewish and we got together and I came to him with this music and he basically said what have you got I said all I've got is these like homemade things and he said 
I don't care. I want to know what they are. And I said, well, this one's called Unveiling Esther. And he said, oh, hold mm-hmm. on a minute here. You are going to be singing this song. And I said, really? And he took it. He created music. We've been doing it for two years. We're only just about to release next year the full album. Two years in the studio of him creating music that he hears in his spiritual mind because all I have is the lyrics and the melody. And we've come together. And it's, I, I, I guess in a sense, it's like, Heritage is coming together to create this beautiful healing music for people all around the world. And that is really my heart to see that women, all of you that are watching right now, know that if you just step out with whatever you have, and I literally had an iPhone and a couple of voice memos, that was it. And a very, very basic program online that didn't even have the functionality properly, let me tell you. And I brought that to the surface and God met me there and did the rest of it, which is now to a level that I had never, ever thought that it would go to, honestly. So women need to understand that it's not a matter of being perfected, having it all set up and ready to go before you even present it. This is part of the humility that you come with vulnerability to to actually to God and say, this is what I have. Let's get the connections happening. And I promise you, it does happen. It does happen. And I think that has actually been happening much more frequently for women. I've I've seen a lot of different um, women who are just, um, I like to call them the suddenlies. The suddenly yes. just happen. And it's almost like, you know, you're walking along and then suddenly. <laughs> and that's what, what God's been doing because it it has been it has been a very, very hard season for a lot of people. And um I think it's sometimes in those hard seasons. And if if we go back to the whole reason about the Esther, okay, yes. it was hard for her to go to the king. She yes. she she had to fast because she had, there was a potential for her to be killed. Yeah. So this wasn't easy. It was yeah. hard, but she found favor. She found favor, but she didn't take advantage of that favor. She fasted more until she really felt the timing was right. And I think that that's a very key thing right now. There are so many people who I, we were talking about being pregnant. There are so many people who want to push, but it's not time. It's not time. So you have to wait. And I remember when I was pregnant with my kids, there was that month. There was that one month that you're like, oh, get this thing out. Like I'm done being pregnant. Yeah. It's like, I am so done being pregnant. Let's just get this puppy going. And it wasn't, but it wasn't safe. So you had to just swallow up your feelings, your emotion, in order to bring the baby to a healthy fruition. And I think that's that, what Esther did. She, yeah. she basically put her, um, the other people's lives ahead of herself. That's it right. also talks in the, I mean, in the ancient sacred text, it talks about the Shekinah resting glory. And if we mm-hmm. look at what Shekinah actually is, it is, it is the sacred divine feminine energy Mm. and this is something that we have probably suppressed a lot of that divine femininity of being a woman in her feminine presence and when you bring that together with entrepreneurial and business and creativity you actually are creating not just a business but a ministry of serving humanity out of compassion out of unity because this is what the divine feminine actually is about and actually even also out of a, a, a spirit of empathy. So as women, we want to nurture because that's the way we were created. And we want to bring something that is of value. We don't want it just to be like, oh, there it is, have a great time. We as women are ones that want to catch up. We want to connect. We want to be emotionally connected. And I think that as creative entrepreneurs as women we have an ability to bring something to the earth that has not been seen before and that is the balance of the masculine and the feminine 
coming together to unify, to actually bring peace upon people's hearts and upon the earth. That these are not just going to be ideas that are, you know, are, are, are from nowhere. These are actually God-given ideas that women are actually holding on to. And I also will go into the fact that some of us don't want to birth. Mm. I'll, I'll go the other way, yeah. that we're, 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 we're in this place where we're having an overdue season, right? And mm -hmm. because of fear, because of doubt, because of our how we valued ourselves as a woman, we don't feel that we are worthy to give birth to this mm -hmm. baby, right? So then we go and look for what? Outside people to give you recognition or environments that you put yourself in that actually become more of a hindrance because then we become codependent on people telling us yeah you're good great. Yeah, you good, can do good it. word but Jen, the, but the inside of you you are actually not even believing that you are worthy so mm -hmm. i always come back to 101 what do you believe about yourself is mm -hmm. always going to pertain to what your environment is going to turn out I had very bad thoughts about myself where I didn't think that anything I had was going to be effective for anyone, right? My environment produced that. I ended up having friends in my life that did not, you know, were not in the, in the support realm and it was a constant cycle. I felt like I was doing the same thing over and over again and I was getting the same ugly results until I made a conscious awareness and made a shift within myself I need to look after me. As a woman, we have been putting ourselves on the bottom of the list. No matter how much we try to go mm -hmm. up the list, and we might say, yeah, yeah, I look after myself, but I'm actually really talking about looking after yourself because your well-being means that you can then pour out more love to your family and friends and to your calling. If we are in a place where we're constantly here on the bottom tier and it becomes, what, frustration, anger, we get actually into the uh, area of resentment. So then we resent the people around us who actually love us so much, but we think they only want me to do this and I'm not allowed to go and do that. I feel like you're controlling me here and that. We have these conversations. Let's be honest about that. And so when you come to realise, you know what, I have to love myself first. I have to know what is it about me that I love about me. And when I mentor my women, I say, tell me five amazing things about you. And do you know what? Most of them have trouble finding mm. five amazing things to honestly say about themselves. And I say, if you can't find five things, you need to go to the five closest people that know you and will be honest with you and give you that beautiful message. Because when we hear it, it changes something molecular in our body our form starts to change they say you can actually feel younger and mm -hmm. look younger when you are saying things over your life that speak life and not death this is not woo woo stuff we've become now as entrepreneurs involving the body mind and spirit Business now is not just my mind. If I just strategize, I'll make it. No, unfortunately, because this, you're a solo entrepreneur and you're out there on the, in the marketplace, as we've been called as Esthers, if we really believe that, we must walk that walk and not just talk the talk. Mm. That's one thing about me. I don't just, you know, say, say, say. I go and I take action. And that can sometimes to other people put them in a place of, oh, that's a bit too much for me, but overwhelming. I, I don't know what to do with that. We take, they say, little baby steps. We take baby steps into full uh, creativity. See, when we look at creativity, we see it as something that, um, oh, yeah, I, I, I want to draw, I want to design. But there's actually something spiritual about creativity and it's actually locked up inside of us and it is in our womb. As a woman, we carry creativity in the womb because we are always birthing. We are in a cycle of birthing, whether we're having natural children or whether we're having spiritual manifestations of the things that God has given us. So in this creative womb is where everything goes, all our thoughts, all our heart desires, all our 
you know, even stresses and anxieties. And that's where we have to be able to balance that. And if we don't know how to balance it, we have a business or a calling that is always on rocky road. And rocky road causes turbulence. And when we have turbulence, what happens? We start to drift away from what the actual, you know, calling has been for us. And then we focus way too much on the negative. And the negative will always bring what? More negative. I mean, it's quite simple maths. Negative plus negative is more negative. If we actually saw ourselves as positive beings who actually reflect the love of God wherever we go, ancient Jewish wisdom says, serve all of God's children. I think that actually means everyone. Mm. There's not one denomination. There's not one particular type of person. It's all of God's children. And that's why we see the Jewish heritage among the wealthiest in the world because they choose to serve God's children no matter what. Look at what they have been through, horrendous things, and they still serve God's children in an integrous way. And that is how I think we need to start acting. I think that we need to start taking those ancient Jewish wisdom keys and incorporating it into our daily life, which is something I started doing five to six years ago and really made an effort that my business was not just going to be for me. Because as creatives, we're very in inner. It's about me. It's about what I do. It's about how I present myself. But in the end, really, it has to be um, helping other people and that is the powerful part. When you shift from you, even though you've done the inner work, shift from you into serving humanity, they call this divine providence. And we know what that is. It's God intervening in situations that you would never have dreamed of. But it cannot happen until you let go of your self, self thing, you know, that all that kind of stuff. But the, the, the fact is here, as women, we are able to, in this, I believe it is the golden era of creativity. We are coming into a renaissance and women are about to shoot through, like sprout up and they're going to be seen and they're going to be, it's going to be very quick. But those ones that have been underground have had the major workings on. There has been stuff that has had to come to the surface. There has been so much pain that has to come out before we can come out and actually bring the truth of God to the people that they're serving, whether you're mentoring, whether you have a product, whether you're speaking, whether you're performing, it doesn't matter. We have to use this gift to serve God's children. I agree. I agree. And, you know, going back to what you were talking about, with um, the thing about Israel, see, there there were blessings. So one of the things that in the in the, in the Jewish religion, they bless their children. Do you know yes. how many people do not bless their children? Yes. I mean, Christians do not bless their children the way that that um, that Jewish people bless their children. So there is the the blessing, and in the blessing. It, there are marching orders. There is also yes. affirmation. There is also direction. There is also, it gives you your identity in the blessing. Because when you start to bless somebody, you start to speak out the things that they are and what they're called to be. So there's an identity. The reason we're in an identity crisis is because nobody's ever told people who they are. You're so spot on right now. Because about five years ago, we started doing Shabbat on a Friday night. Mm -hmm. And in this prayer, actually, I use um, the Torah blessing. As I, I can't remember who, the guy who wrote it, but I can give you the details afterwards. Mm -hmm. And he does the whole prayer of how you are to bless your children during this prayer. Mm -hmm. And it's actually affirming by the husband to yep. the children who they are and what inheritance they have been given by God. Now, when we started doing this, the kids were like, ah, you know, they didn't know what the heck was going on. But now it's like, mum, are we doing the prayer? And then the boys actually pray for each other that they have blessing over their uh, future. We actually, we actually even talk about businesses. We talk about how we're going to serve humanity. This is real talk. This is, this is building a legacy. 
If, if it says in the Bible that we are here to um, provide for our children's children, mm-hmm. and that in the Jewish wisdom is actually a commandment for them. They are to leave an inheritance for their children's children. That's quite a lot of inheritance when you think about it. And if we're in a place where we're lack-minded and poverty-stricken all the time and we're only living for ourselves, what are our children receiving then so we shifted the ground we said we speak life into our children and from my husband's side that he would bless them with a blessing every friday not just once a year every friday these children get a blessing whispered into their ear it's not done in the open there's reasons for this in the ear it is silently whispered prophetically into our boys ears and then they walk away from that feeling like they are invigorated they've got purpose they've got a plan this family is working together and once again that's why you see many jewish people work in family businesses because it, it is all on the same page everyone is there to work for the one thing Well, and that also goes back because the Lord started to show me about the Tower of Babel. He started to show me how that was so significant because if you look at what he said, yes, the the people were coming together to do something that that wasn't good. But what he said, what he said to Jesus and the Holy Spirit with, with them all speaking the same language and having the same focus, having the same destination, there is nothing that they cannot succeed in. Nothing. So he had to confuse their language so they couldn't communicate. That is that is why communication is so key. This is the, the reason that God is really going after media to really start to communicate his heart especially to his women. And that's why I think that like myself and like you, there are women who are rising up to speak into women that don't just say, read your Bible, sing Kumbaya and wait for Jesus. But they're saying, get out of the pew, go out to the streets, start healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out demons, start taking back your land, start telling all those different, you know, spirits to get out. Yes. The, The same spirits that Moses had to deal with when he was taking the land, we deal with. We deal with. We deal with it in a different way, but it's the same darn spirit. And there's always going to be giants in your land. Like, That's right. Feel about it, right? Mm-hmm. But I think that just depends where are you at in your walk to know that I've already like got victory on this. That's right. If it's your destiny and calling. There is nothing that should stop you and for you to retreat back into your cave. I know that there are times that we go back into our creative cave for reasons like King David did, right? But the fact is when you get sent out, you don't retreat back and go, oh, I don't know if I should do this now because there there are a whole ton of people waiting for you to push forward so that you can trailblaze that course for them to, to be able to go through an easier way. What I have tried to do, I tell you, I have had enough attack come left, right and centre for what I wanted to set up in this area of coaching and mentoring because it really wasn't something that many were talking about at the time. And so when you do something that is new and innovative and you think, oh, my goodness, like what's going to happen here? But I knew that that was my destiny and calling because I was doing it anyway as an 18-year-old mentoring young musicians and artists What was the difference now? I'm actually doing something that I really love to do. This is the focus here. Do what you love to do. Don't do what everyone else tells you what you should love to do because that's not coming from a place of authenticity. It's coming from a place where you are conforming to other people's ideologies, Uh, society has this expectation that you as a woman must do this or, you know, you're not really a businesswoman. How are you going to do this? Like, you haven't done your MBA or your PhD. 
hello, you don't need one anymore. What you do need is a strategy and a plan. And this is where uh, we talk about, you know, the masculine and the feminine. Masculine is the doing. It's the goal setting. It's the action. And the feminine is the dreaming and the imagination and going into the secret place and receiving the downloads. And when those two come together, we have an amazing business platform. But if it's only on this, which is the masculine side, we are forever as women striving. We're forever battling. We're in the war zone. We've got our swords all day long, sleeping with it, wondering if we need to use it in our sleep. This is where we have to come into a balance. There is a time for that. And then there is a time where there is this beautiful creativity flourishing out of your creative womb. And there is a cycle to the creative womb, which I go into much detail. But the thing is, when you know that you can go into this imagination state with God, co-creating, we've been talking about this buzzword, co-create, co-create. But I think as women, we're a little bit, little bit hesitant to think that we could co-create with God. Because we think like, God's up there and I'm, I'm, I'm down here. How could I, how dare I even think such things? No, you've got to listen to your heart. God is saying, I'm inviting you into this sanctuary, into this garden of creativity. I want you to come with me and let's do this thing together. If we don't do it now, I'm telling you, I would say to many women, you're going to be watching the boat and I call it the yacht, just zoom by because... Mm-hmm. We were too scared to step out of our comfort zones because we've never heard this before. How dare you create with God? God is the creator, but the creator lives in me. I I have to. It's so funny. As you were talking about it, I started to, I don't know if you saw the movie The Shack, but- I've yet to see it. I know, bad, bad. Okay. No, no, no. No, but there is a scene- that the, the main character, Mackenzie, is brought into the garden with the Holy Spirit to help. He came to help to create. Yes. He's, and and so he was co-creating with God, with the Holy Spirit. I mean, that's that's really what it was. And I think if we start to, to actually understand about healing, that sometimes we are co-creating when it's a miracle, because there is a creation happening, we are co-creating with the Holy Spirit for like if it's um, if we're praying for a hearing to come back or for an eye to come back or whatever it is. So but there's also the fact that, you know, we can the Jesus said to the disciples, he said that you can say something and if you do not doubt that it will that you can move the mountain. But it's also we can create because that's that's what we are supposed to do. In, in the beginning, in Genesis, Adam and Eve were sent to create. That was their yes. mandate, was to create. Now, not only just procreate, not just have babies, but to create because they were given authority over the heavens, uh, over the, the air, over the yes. water, and over the land. They had authority. Well, when Jesus went to the cross, we got that authority back. So what you're saying about creation, you know, it says that creation is groaning for the sons and and daughters of God to arise because we can start to create peace. We can start to release the things of heaven because of our words. Our words are so important. And there is this shift because women are getting it. See, that's the other thing because we were talking about how women are creative. See, men are not as creative. Not not that some of them aren't. There are some who are very, very creative, but but the majority, they're not. They push that part of them down. They have it in them, but they just push that down because they have other things to take care of. But women are always, we're always creating. I mean, if you think about it, we we create dinners. <laughs> you know, we we create we create clothing options. You know, we we decorate the house for the holidays. We're always well. Look creating. at Proverbs thirty-one. I mean, that's it. Just buying property. You that's know, right. That's, this is the thing. Like they say that the book of Proverbs is the sacred feminine. It it is really what we have missed out on is the fact that there's so much wisdom there, but we have really suppressed ourselves from receiving. And it's really awesome that you talked about that whole garden thing. 
because God wanting to create, but are we receiving that? Mm -hmm. And this is where as a woman, the receiving part can actually be a little bit, sometimes a bit hard for us because of once again, our self-worth. We're great at giving out, which we're forever giving out to society, to our family, to our job, to um, to God. We're even giving out to God. And then there's this like where the cycle changes and it's like, are you going to receive the goodness, the prosperity, the abundance, the ideas, the connections, the people that want to actually sit with you and talk about how great you are at what you do? And then you're like, <gasps> um, no, I've got to deal with some stuff before I do that. Like, I've got some issues around that, you know, and what happens is that ego steps in and ego is always one to protect you. That's the way we've been created. Ego protects you from taking new steps or challenges in your life. That's what ego does. And it's all based around fear, fear of the past, fear of disappointment, fear of failure, fear of what if um, everyone laughs at me? What if I, I, um, you know, don't present it well the first time and everyone just goes, oh, she's a dud, whatever, right? That's ego. That ego plays with um, with our mind all the time and it actually can af- start affecting our body. Our body will start to respond to that and fear lives in disease. That's just, I'll just be upfront with that. Fear lives in disease and that is why we have dis-ease because of fear. The dis is like it's not connecting and there's dis-ease in everything that we do. So women have to start. And I believe right now before the end of the year, because we've already come into a Jewish new year and then we come into the new year on the Gregorian calendar, that these words that you speak over yourself in the next three months are so important that it is the words of God to affirm your destiny, to affirm maybe your business platform, to affirm where are you going as a woman who is creative. Because if there's, everyone's talking about these creative women rising up, let's just do it. (laughs) No more talk about it. Like just do with whatever you have. I'm at the moment mentoring a few women who are working on their projects and they are getting stirred up inside. They can't wait any longer because they are ready. So there's a, there's a heap more of you out there. I know that. It's just that this whole self-worth thing just keeps playing its monologue. And it, it is just a monologue. Well, you know, that's one of the reasons that I did the Daddy's Girl Conference because it really was about identity. Because when you know who you are and whose you are, you act differently. Because we've been walking around with an orphan spirit. We've been walking around with a poverty mentality. We've been walking around that God hates us or or at least, well, maybe not hates us, but he doesn't like me so much. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. uh, I'm not his favorite where like, when you truly understand who he is and who you are, you're like, I am his favorite. I am his number one girl. Send me because you know, it'll get done. It's a different mindset. Then you can start to receive the blessings. Then you can start speaking blessings because you once that poverty mentality shifts. And it's so funny, Daniela, that you actually talked about the fear thing because the Lord said to me one day, he said, Lisa, he said, when sin came in at the Garden of Eden, he said, so did fear. And he said, oh, every, yeah. he said, every single sin, he said, or stronghold is based in fear. And he actually said that the, the spirit of poverty is the fear that you don't deserve anything. Yes. Yes. You yes. don't. Now think about that because that's, you know, people think, well, a poverty mentality. No, that's just, it's just that I just don't want to think about money. No, well, it, let's be honest, we don't deserve money. anything. We, we, we actually need money to be able to do the things. We, we all want to yes. go and help humanity yes. and set up all of these amazing things, right? Jewish wisdom actually says, if you want to go and help humanity and set up charities and whatever, start a business. Mm -hmm. start an integrous business that helps people and then from that you branch a part of your portion of your revenue or profits into something that helps maybe women in domestic violence whatever it may be but this is where it comes down to the core what is our relationship to god and our relationship that actually pertains to money because Mm -hmm. it all comes from that receiving and the giving 
Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And that is where the, the, the blockage is, is that how do we see God and our earthly father, how we perceive our earthly father in the area of money and giving and receiving? And I tell you, that's when you open up a lot of stuff and a lot of women have had areas where they don't trust that God is going to give them what they desire in a monetary form so they can actually go and help more people because of their earthly relationship with their father has yes. been null and void. Well, and that's, that's, that's what he is. said. He actually said to me, he said, Lisa, he says, my daughters don't know how to be daughters. So you will teach them. That's why I did. It was called daddy's girls, exactly. how to walk as a daughter of the, of the most high. Because there's, there is such a, um, a strategy when you, when you have a good, good father, you know that you can go to him with anything. There is no fear. You can just go to him. And, it, and it's funny because God like pulls up stuff. Okay. So I'm seeing, I'm seeing the movie Dirty Dancing. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Dirty Dancing. Oh yeah. Okay. So do you remember when, when the girl was like, she, she needed to, she was pregnant and she was having some issues and um and she went and she she had an abortion and she had complications because of it so baby left to go and get her daddy she knew that she knew that she was going to get in trouble because of what happened but she still knew her daddy was a good daddy and yeah. he would do the right thing yeah that even though the person that, that she was bringing her father to. Oh, this is so good. The person that she was bringing her father to did a, a sinful, sinful thing. But she still went and got her father. Yeah. That's how we have to be as daughters of our father. We have to bring daddy to all the different situations, to any kind of place where people are hurting, where they need that tender touch from heaven. And we can bring him with an assurance that he is going to make this better and he is going to correct the problem. I think yeah. that's a, that's a, I've never thought of it in that way, but wow, that God is so good because he always takes stuff that is relevant, that there is something that we can relate to and to see it in a, in a godly way. To see it in a in a different way, to to bring a clarity and an understanding to people who still might not understand, if if he if you're doing something bad, how do you still bring God in it? You have to bring God into everything. everything. It's yeah. it's like, for instance, if we go back into being a businesswoman or an entrepreneur, you got to bring God into all aspects of your business. Absolutely. And even in ancient Jewish wisdom, they talk about that God is in their business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they take everything to God. And so yep. we can't separate. This is what I've always been one to say. You can't separate God and business because it actually is one. Like, mm -hmm. this, is the, this is the true fact that we are here on this planet to help bring more prosperity onto it, right? So mm -hmm. if we're not actively doing that, who is? What mm -hmm. is? Like, mm -hmm. what, what are we doing? So we, we, we cannot keep professing prosperity if we're not actually doing prosperity. And that's the difference here. That's where I've come to a massive shift that I was proclaiming prosperity all the time and then going to go watch Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't quite work out for me, let me tell you. And I did that for quite a little while, but, well, you know, I said it. God now, do it, yay? Well, it didn't happen that way. God had to intervene on me as a person and what I was about, like what was going on in there that I had some issues with my, my heavenly father relationship, my relationship between receiving um, uh, any kind of abundance was like null and void. I did not accept it because it was not the right thing to do. You don't, don't do that, right? So this is where I had to go through that whole purging, the whole reinventing myself because to say I'm prosperous, I'm prosperous. But the fact is you actually need to do some steps that creates the prosperity. And you're going to be asked to do something that you might not be comfortable with. Let me tell you. You might have to get on that Facebook Live and tell everyone who you are and what you do. You might have to go and start a website and actually put a price 
of what you charge for your services and not be so, oh my gosh, you know, what's going to happen when I do that? You know, it's, 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 it's just another level. There's another level here that I want to actually break open and say, if you really believe that you're a woman of God and you've got an amazing idea that is going to help humanity and it should be turned into a business, stop walking around like you're just doing it in your head. Like, it's like, oh, yeah, no, I'm, yeah, just working on something. No, like, literally, what do you do? Who do you do it for? And how can you help people right this minute with whatever you have in your hands? And I think that's, that's what gets me sort of stirred up is that I do believe that we can actually have major abundance in our life. And we talk about this transference of wealth, right? We're yep. hearing it. We're hearing it. But the thing is, the transference of wealth happens as soon as you're ready to receive that transference. It's not just going to appear in your bank account. This whole thing that we've heard, oh, it's just going to, it's just going to all flood open and the gates. I mean, that is something that is misleading. That's misleading to me because I've tried it. So I've been there of thinking that the floodgates will just open. But I had to actually say to myself, this transference of wealth means I'm going to have to do something in order to receive the transference of wealth. That means my mindset has to change into a wealth consciousness of my relationship between God and how I see myself. The other part is that I need to start vocalizing what I do and who I am. So we use our voice, our communication, media, which is one of the seven mountains. And then we birth out of, and I can't show you right here, but out of this creative womb, what has been deeply planted in us before the beginning of time is about to start its little growth, right? And this is why the reason, I'll tell you, with the whole area of the Hebraic, it talks about when you have the letter Sameth, which is the only letter that is full circle, it's closed. And it talks about it as a womb. And when your womb is closed, baby grows. Womb is open, what happens? We've been told in the hospital, anything comes in, it's bacteria, right? It's going to hinder the baby or the process of you giving birth. So we don't open our circle and just go, hey, everyone, I'm letting everybody in <laughs> because that's also too not wisdom. So you've got to find your circle. And sometimes it might be two or one, one or two people in your life that will actually be there, like you said, like a midwife to help you grow this beautiful baby and not have a premature birth and then just be out there and then go, oh, my God, i got to pull it back in again. There's so many steps to the strategy, but most of us just want to jump on in out there and just, yay, I heard it, I'm doing it. And then it's like, uh-oh, I didn't think about these these processes. I didn't think about what people were going to um, either come back at me and say because those arrows will shoot and if we're not resilient then they will affect us. And what happens most of the time with many women is that they go back into that didn't work. I did not work for me. I'm not going to do it. This is all past. Like, yeah, had a great time. Now I'm just going to live my life out just, you know, just in worship and just, you know, just, just, um. <laughs> I'll just sit in the pew. I'll just, sit, I'll just sit in the chair. I'll just sit in the chair and you guys just, just go. You know, it. one of the things that, that I am, um, that I really believe is the, the power of praying in the spirit. I am a, a, a big proponent about praying in the spirit. I think if you want to see your business change, mm -hmm. pray in the spirit. Because mm -hmm. what you said about inviting God, um, I work, I work for a, a, I work for a clothing company. I'll put it that way. I work for a clothing company that, and it's where it, it there's about 130 stores. And we've been getting phone calls lately because our numbers are through the roof. And they've been asking me, what is your secret? What is your secret for these huge sales? What is your secret for, for the numbers that you guys are doing? And I actually said to someone, I said, well, I said, I could tell you the truth or I could just make, make something up and make it sound good. And she goes, oh, no, I definitely want the truth. I said, well, just hold on. I said, because I pray. And she said, what? She goes, well, mm -hmm. I pray too. I said, no, no, no. 
No, I pray. Really pray. And I invite God into this place. Yeah. It's not like I say, bless this place. I say, come in to this mm -hmm. place. And mm -hmm. so by praying in the spirit, what we do is we're actually setting a tone because you were talking about sounds. Yes. When we start to pray in, in the spirit, we're actually sending out a signal to any yes, yeah. that is demonic, beat it. We're also saying to the angels, come on in. And we're also... <laughs> We're also saying to the Holy Spirit, have your way. Send. And so what's so cool is that there are people who come in and I've had God conversations with them. I've prayed with people. I've talked to people. People have been ministered to because I've opened up that atmosphere and where God is honored, where he is recognized, he will bless. Just think about the Ark of the Covenant. When they put the Ark of the Covenant inside that house, remember they were trying to hide it? Yes. And the yes. blessings started to come into the house. Like so many blessings were coming into the house. Well, guess what, guys? Holy Spirit's in this house. He's in, in the temple. Our temple. House. Yeah. That's right. So Everywhere. We, yep. we should yep. be reaping rewards left and right. We should be the head and not the tail. We we should be the, the lender and not the borrower. But because of what people have spoken into us, and this is where yeah. I, I, I kind of felt led to go, was the reason that people aren't receiving is because they don't feel worthy to receive. So it's a spirit of unworthiness. It's that poverty spirit. But yeah. this, is the, this is the awesome thing about God. He is not going to do something or force you to do something that you don't want to do because there is something called free will. And that works in a good way and it works in a bad way because God yeah. wants to bless you because yeah. that's what he, that's what Jesus said. He wants to bless you. I mean, it says in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans I have for you says the Lord. It's for a hope and a future. Yes. <laughs> it's not for destruction and for, you know, spanking you. That's not who he is. So when we start to understand and we start to say, okay, Lord, so, so you want to bless me and I am supposed to, I, I'm supposed to thrive and I'm supposed to be the head and not the tail. Get rid of these things that have been blocking me from receiving those blessings so mm -hmm. that I can receive everything you want to give in to me. And I will mm -hmm. say this, blessings come in many forms. Don't just oh, yeah. think somebody's going to come and give you a thing. No. You know, sometimes somebody will, there might be something that you were thinking. This actually was uh, story was told to me. Um, there was a woman who loves pocketbooks. She just loves pocketbooks. And so, and every single, every time that God has done something very significant in her life, somehow she gets these very expensive pocketbooks. And so she knows that when something good happens, she's expecting a pot. Now she's expecting it. Now it's not even like, oh, it's going to, you know, now she's like, cool, I'm getting a new bag. <laughs> and, yeah, and she's attracting it. She's That's right. actually positioned her body to receive. That's right. Positioned her mind. That's right. In a Christ-like mind saying, I'm an expectation. And we think that, oh, are we being a bit hard on God? Like, I'm expecting this from God. It's not like that. We're not acting like little children, little sport brats going, I want this. It's no, it's like, well, there's an expectation in the air. And it's like, you know, when you have that, there's an there's this atmosphere of this expectation of a birthing. So mm -hmm. when then we prepare ourselves to receive that, it should be the same way in the natural. We can do it in the spiritual. We should be able to do it in the natural as well. And that is just really shifting our mindset and letting go of the former things that have and still play out on our timeline. And this is the problem, is that we do things that are from old fear-based mentality and then we expect different results when we go forward. It's like, no, I've got to cut that off. Mm -hmm. Whatever I used to talk about myself or whoever was in my life at the time that spoke those things or I believed about myself or that unworthiness is cut off from the ground up, like from its root, where there's always a root destination to where things started and they usually happen before we're seven let's just be honest about that as well yeah. a lot of us go through a lot of trauma a lot of either divorces separations all that kind of stuff right or so by that stage we've already developed mm -hmm. um, our awareness 
and how we think our life is going to turn out. So it plays itself all the time. It's like a reoccurring sort of, you know, song that comes on. You go, oh, I don't want that again. We've got to cut it off from the root and go, right, I'm reinventing myself. From today is a new canvas and you get that ability every morning. Like this is what God says to me. Every morning you wake up is not your yesterday. Mm. Every morning you wake up is your today. What is it that you want to create today? Who is it that you want to be in connection with or that you want to um, be able to express? And I tell you, no lie, always something happens when you dedicate that first breath to God and to divine providence. And this is once again why the ancient Jewish people, they they actually have a morning prayer as soon as they open their mouth, they give honor to God for their breath and for their soul that has returned back into their body. Because we go places, man. We're not staying there. We're going places. So I'm sorry to break it to everybody, but there is some spiritual awareness here that we have to wake up breath and i say this to my kids the minute you open your mouth it's like thank you god for life today i get to live another day i get to walk with my legs i get to go out there and create something because we have an innate um feeling to create Mm. we are not born to sit and just let life happen for us we make life happen we have that destiny in us we have to take action and that's all about the action again. And that, and I think that's so important because if we don't have action, what is it? Faith without action is dead. It's dead. So, you know, you can have all the faith in the world, but if you're not doing something with it, it's it doesn't even matter because we can't. And I, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll preface it this way. Time is short. Jesus is not going yes. tomorrow. Time is short because there's so much work to do. And there's so many people who just don't want to do the work. I no. mean, they just don't want to do the work. And so they're, that, that's why I think that woman, Wonder Woman movie came out. I truly- Well, look at her story. Let's Absolutely. look at Gal Gadot for a minute here because she was on the verge of giving up. If anyone watched any of her interviews, I'm a major fan of her. And I, knew, she- I knew nothing of her work before. Let me tell you, I knew nothing of her before she... She jumped out on the scene like an Esther, but she had a very heartfelt uh, interview saying, literally went back to Israel and she's like, forget about it. I'm done with this. Like it has been one after the other, small roles, just not enough. Like really, do I need to keep doing this? You know, she's got a family, she's got a husband, she's got a life, right? She's poured out her heart into her career and she's still hitting that wall and then bang divine intervention steps in she didn't even know she was auditioning for wonder woman like and the director was a woman like let's just have a look at what is happening here yes she gets plucked out of the scene like an esther gets put right in front of society Mm -hmm. and she is the woman like she really is it's the I think it's the highest grossing movie uh like in, in of all history of something like it's just crazy stuff and Mm -hmm. all honor can only go to god all Mm -hmm. honor of that because she knew that in that time at her lowest point divine providence hit because she surrendered and this is what they talk about there's a sweetening in your surrender when Mm -hmm. you surrender a sweetening fragrance happen happens this is like ancient jewish wisdom again it actually comes up to god and then bang the activation happens she's on her face Boom, phone calls come through. She's like, I don't even know what the heck was going on when she got the call. She's like, what? And then her whole life has dramatically gone pivotal. I don't say a 360 because we don't want to go back to where we were. She did a pivot where now she's basically moved herself over there, family, and now she's also doing more movies. Like, Mm -hmm. can I that? An ordinary girl... It can happen to you. Mm -hmm. Anyone watching here, it can happen to you. What is it that you want to happen, though? Don't let anything just happen to you. Mm -hmm. That's going to be really fun for you. I didn't want that, but I got it anyway. Oh, oh, what am I getting all things I don't want? What is it that you really want? What is it that you really, really want? And don't think yourself that you're being selfish because now the portals have opened. The portals have opened for everyone's desires that they really feel is to serve 
God's children is coming to pass for you. So you better be careful what you really want. (laughs) Mm, That's a good word. That's a really good word because it, the the interesting um what is the phrase it says life and death is in the power of our tongue mm-hmm. and so we what we speak we will walk out so if we Absolutely. speak out destruction we're going to walk out destruction but if we speak out life if we speak out life abundant if we speak Love. out blessings if we speak out provision if we start to speak out divine connections that that daddy god has things lined up and set up that i don't have to worry because he is doing it. he has put this into my heart and anything that he has placed into my heart he will blow on it to make it to make give it life because it's that's so simple he's a giver of life it's so simple isn't it we mm-hmm. just complicate it a little bit yeah. and we get wrapped up in the story, the old story, whatever that is, God's judging me, I'm being chastised, I'm going yeah. to another trial, and it's like trial after trial. God, God's just seeing if I can really handle this. Like seriously, no. I stopped that stuff. That was yeah. self-sabotage 101. That yeah. actually stopped me from being creative. I was always stuck in my story of God is doing something. He's trying to do something that is is different and sorry and that's okay i was just saying that that god you know people think that well god didn't want me to do that so he took it away from me no if that is self-sabotage inside, seriously if he put it inside of you he's gonna do it and and the thing is uh, well, uh, god would absolutely. give you something and then take it away and that, go yes it wasn't for you i, no. I just no nah. No, I'm seeing my that. whole life. I'm going to dangle the little forward. carrot in front of you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. See, I'm seeing my whole life transform from as the age of 11, always wanting to sing, mm-hmm. has now become the major fruit of what I do. It's, mm. My life revolves around serving humanity with music and inspiration and mm-hmm. helping people. So why would God take that away from me? What is that right. bad for me? Right. It's not. It's just, it's no. just. Self sabotage of if it's too good to be true, it can't be God. Right. Right. No, because everybody who serves God has to go and live in Africa and feed the orphans. Some are called to that, but I tell you what, we can't (laughs) take those vows and think that God only works through those channels. No. We are all to just drop like flies and go, right, we're going to go only do that. There are people who are supposed to be in business like yep. majorly there yep. are people who have uh, to be in at uh, probably in areas of the seven mountains that they have yet to discover whether mm-hmm. that be in the medical field whether that be in in politics and they're ignoring the signs they're mm-hmm. ignoring the push and they're just going no 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 that's not me you know you might not be educated you might have not finished school let me tell you it don't matter anymore mm-hmm. it doesn't matter because god can use whoever says what Yes. yes, I say mm-hmm. yes, and mm-hmm. I say yes, my yes is my yes, and my no is my no. God yeah. heard it, the angels heard it. That means he's going to prepare me for that moment. That's the Esther moment. I'm sorry, yeah. Esther wasn't prepared to be, a, she didn't even want to be a queen. Do you know she didn't, she fought mm-hmm. when her uncle said, you have to do it. What girl would want to go and do what he what this king wanted which is very different to our times let me tell you yeah so it wasn't all fun and games and getting all dressed up and being pretty all the time no no the the story of esther is not about a beauty pageant it (laughs) never has been it's just Mm. that it's been professed that way that that this beautiful girl enters the palace and the king loves her and all this sort of stuff it's got nothing to do with that there's actually a lot of suffering in that and a lot of humility of her laying down her life And then realizing that that's where God met her to save her people. Otherwise, she was the only direct channel to be able to save the Jewish people. Yep. Because she herself was Jewish. Yep. And, you know, if you really think about it, that she she actually had to be prepared. Yes. It was a preparation for her. She had to be bathed constantly. I mean, think about it. Like she was a Jewish girl, very simple, you know, and here she was, she was being bathed. She was being probed. Yeah. Probed. Yes. Probed. Yes. Probably yes. like, you know, all this stuff done to her. They even yep. say like in those days, like 
the smell of what you eat would seep through your skin. So they had to get rid of all of that using the oils. That's why the oils were there, mm -hmm. the, um, whatever they were, the oils, and I don't really remember. But the fact is that when you are prepared, it means that you're purging. So mm -hmm. purging equals preparation. Preparation, absolutely. And you know what? If you really think about it too, with the whole birthing process, right before you're about to give birth, oh. like, you know, there is changes. There are some serious changes you have to go through. There is a preparation that you have to go through. Oh yeah, both you and I are like, yeah, we remember. But but what? But the um, but there but but after after you push the baby, after you get to hold the baby, um, it's amazing, right? Like so everything disappears. That's right. Beautiful. The pain, everything. Yep. There's and so that's that's what we're going to do. When, when, when you see your baby for the first time and, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously it's got its eyes closed, but mm -hmm. there is a, a force. It's, it's, it's unexplainable between a mother and a child. Mm -hmm. Even for a husband because they're sitting on something, but literally you feel everything come to life in you. Mm -hmm. And I got a resilience. I was like, I'm ready to just change the world when I had my second son. My first one was actually premature, would you believe? He was six weeks premie. And that was, I never wish it upon anyone what I went through having a premature baby. But this, the second one wasn't. And I had this zest for life. I could do anything. It's like all of your hormones just go wild. So, you know, this is the cycle we're in. We can have that without even having a baby, if we just understand the cycle of creativity, it comes in and it comes out. It doesn't stay mm. all like, like all the time. We have to acknowledge it and go, right, I'm in a place of incubation right now. I must go into my creative cave, create. Now I'm in a place of releasing or I'm in a place of wilderness. I'm in a place of this. And you know what the cycles are. If you don't know what the cycle is, you're just going to be going everywhere. Going, I don't know what's going on. I'm feeling emotional. It's like, okay, yeah. let's ground it. So I'm a bit rough like that. But anyway, you know, just let's but, just get to it. But you know what? The, and I, I just want to go back to what, what you said. When, when you held your baby for the first time, you said you had all these emotions and there was something that came out of you that was almost like this, like you yeah. felt like you could do everything. Yes. That is how the father sees us. If you want it, if you want to to know what your father feels like for for those women who have had babies, go back to that moment. Go back to that moment holding your baby for the first time, because there is something so pure, such expectation. There is there's so much love. There's so much joy. There there's yes. there's so much. There's so yes. much. That is how the father sees us every day. That's the rebirth. That's it. That's the beauty That's of life. It. That's the beauty mm -hmm. of love. That's the beauty of, you know, like we say, a sacred marriage between a man and a woman. That is the beauty of how God created it from day one, that mm -hmm. we are here to create all yes. the time, all the time. Yes. So I just want to encourage everyone listening and understanding that you have a divine purpose on this mm -hmm. planet for this time, not you know, next 10 years time, we're talking right now, a lot of you are probably waiting and wondering what's the next step. You have got to go into that place and, 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 and realize that there is a release for you. There is a release of all anxiety, fear, poverty, all things that have, you know, pertain to failure and, and disappointment is now shifting and it's pivoting over into this place of release of creativity. And if you really believe that you are called to an entrepreneurial platform, don't ignore the signs anymore because I believe that God has so many people prepared for these people that say yes, that are going to connect with them and show them. They're going to say, hey, Hey, you need a website? Bang, I can help you out. Hey, you need me need me to help you out with this? I can help you with that. Just be open and to receive every single minute of the day. I just believe there's so many people that are going to either watch this on the replay or watching now who go, yes, I'm one of those yeah. people. I want to do the thing that God has called me and I want to serve God's children. Yeah, and Daniela, will you go ahead and would you just pray to release the, yes. the hidden seeds that oh. need, oh, I know, right? <laughs> the hidden seeds that need to come forth? Yes, yes. Heavenly Father, mm -hmm. we thank you that today is a day of a 
rebirth for so many women here who have been in a place of dryness. They have been in a place of tears that have been flooding on the desert plain. But the Father says the oasis is there for you right now. The cosmic seed of creativity has been planted in you purposely for a purpose, for such a time as this, that you will start to speak your creative gifts and talents, that you will not suppress anymore your expression of your artistry, of your musicality, or your concepts that seem to be far out for other people, but for you, you know it's going to work. So today, I thank you that every woman has an activation of their cosmic seed, the seed of creativity, the seed of the divine feminine energy, of the book of Proverbs, of wisdom, of you believing once again in the destiny that was given to you before you were even conceived. It was already in you. The word of life was already placed inside of you and now you are going to be taking this mantle and you're going to be forging forward for others because humanity is waiting for your gift your gift that nobody else can do. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what you've thought of yourself. Now is the day for a new day of you breathing over your gift as you enter into that sanctuary with God to co-create the most beautiful canvas of the life that you have always dreamed for you and your family or for you and your spouse, or for, for all those women who have been in a place where they've even been single, Lord. I pray that you meet with them and that you come together with them and that you support them in their dream and their vision. In Jesus' name. Amen. That was good. That was really good. So, um, okay, if people want to get in touch with you, they can actually go to your website, which is www.daniellaion.com. I've been putting that up. It's up there right now. So if you want to. Or my Facebook as well. Facebook Facebook Messenger is always really good. Or just find me on Facebook. Um, You won't have any issues there. Yeah. Yes. And if they also want to go to iTunes is where Mm -hmm. they can find your song, your single. Now, can people actually vote for that? I uh, know it's all the voting's been closed, so okay. it's now up to the judges to do the next part of the votes. Okay. And we do have a single coming out next year uh, in okay. time for summer here in Australia, and we're about to go into pre-production video clips and all that kind of thing. So um, you will be hearing a song all about the woman in the desert you know, coming to life again. So I'm very, very excited. Great. That is going to be great. And you also, um, you have a book that you're working on, Yes. Yes, I have a book. <laughs> do you know what's funny? I yeah, I do. I do actually. It's been it's a cosmic seed, but uh, it's something very um, oh, it's it's challenging me a little bit. I say in a good way because mm-hmm. it's things that are going to be revealing to a lot of women on the earth about who they really are and 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 the. The, the time that we're in, the revolution that we're in, and I'll talk about in a good way, the renaissance, uh, 2020 is going to be another massive entrepreneurial shift for women. So this is a time for prep. This is your prep time for 2020 because the whole earth is going to be receiving so many innovative ideas from women. And you know what? Men will be supporting this. It's, I'm not saying that men are not involved. It's the coming together in unity. And I believe that if we have the tools in our belt buckle, we'll be able to do some amazing things together. So, yes, that is definitely on. Um, yes. It's coming. It's coming. Cause God showed me. He said, she has a book. I'm like, okie dokie. <laughs> okay. We so that's, this. Yes. The book is coming. So if you guys want to connect with Daniela, you can go to her website. You can check around on Facebook. Definitely go and listen to her song on uh, on iTunes. And she, you are just awesome. And if people are interested in, to, in doing a mentor or for you to actually help to guide them and train them, they can also connect with you. And Yeah. we Look, I'll do a strategy call. Uh, we get on the phone. We have a good chat. See if there's a synergy and see what, what one area is really needing some, you know, results straight away I, I do 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 with that straight away it's um something that people get you know a, a release so they can move forward so yeah get get on messenger you know people can find me it's not it's it's a matter of just getting on there sometimes people go oh, i don't know if i should do this but just oh no 
Absolutely. And I just, um, I just want to speak a blessing over you because I just, I see a couple of things. And so, and sometimes I do it off air, but I just feel that I'm supposed to do it on air. So you have it. Does that make sense? Okay. I get it. Yeah. Um, and so I, I just see that, that God is actually, he's shifting you even (laughs) he's shifting you in a couple of different areas. He's, he's shifting you into an apostolic leadership role that he's actually bringing you into a place of being a mama for for women he's going to he's going to start to bring women who are going to come underneath you to be trained up that you're going to release because you don't have daughters he's going to give you daughters oh this is so good i'm gonna cry Um, oh my god (laughs) yeah it's so true Yeah, he says, so he's going to give you lots of daughters, little girls that you can start to, and some of them are going to be like teenagers. Some are going to be teens. And I actually spoke this over that you're going back to the teens, that there is, and I see that there's, there's going to be, um, there's going to be this, this, um, a shifting because you are very relevant. You're relevant in your dress. You're very relevant in your words. So you're actually, you're going to become, I, I hear the word pop sensation, but it's not in, it's not in music. It's not in music, but it's what it represents. See that, that pop generation or people who listen to pop yes. music, it's a specific genre and it's a specific age group that yeah. listens to pop music. So that's why I'm hearing you're going to be a pop sensation. You're actually going to you're going to start this um this apostolic movement. You're and I I see some actual movement too out of Australia. I see that you're going to be coming overseas, but I also see you going back to Romania for a bit. I see that there's you have a heart cry for Romania that you would like to to change some of the things that you have seen and the things that have broken your heart especially in your family. So God is actually going to bring you back there to help to restore some of the broken places that that you have in your family line and I actually see you breaking papers almost like communion and placing it into the soil to, to actually reestablish it because you understand that that there's there has been I don't want to call it witchcraft but there have been word curses and there have been unholy things that have happened again it's not witchcraft but it is unholy and so I see you breaking the bread and I see you sticking it into the into the dirt. And I actually even see seeing you just like bring back like a purity back to your family's name that there that there was something that actually that they they weren't thought of as as a purified family. There was like almost like you were not pure, but I feel like the Lord is just saying that there's going to become a purity back to your bloodline. So your sons are actually going to walk in this purity so that you don't ever have to worry about that stuff creeping back up because it's, he's making into a pure line. And I also see that the Lord is saying that he's also giving you um, a song for that country, that you're actually going to speak in that language, that you're going to start singing back in, in Romanian, back these beautiful lines love songs to Jesus to start this cultivation of love for Jesus there that if so I I see that there is that you also there's a part of you that wants to come to the states so I feel that there is going to be coming but but it's not to stay it's just to visit but it's to impact that you're a woman of impact and I see that the Lord is saying that in your in your passport it it's like when they stamp it it's almost going to say impact that you've impacted every place that you go in each stamp. And when you go to Israel, there is going to be an impact. When you go to Israel, there is going to be a big impact because every place that you go, you carry the song, you carry his song that you are going to release. And I see you at the wailing wall and I see you singing into the wailing wall. And I see that there's a heart cry for the people because there, there's a generation that was lost but you're bringing it back. You're bringing back this generation of, of these wailing, these wailing um, songstresses because the Lord used to send the women out to sing. Before yes. They, and, and you're, that's who you yes. are. That's who you are. So as you go and you, you release these songs, you're releasing a purity. You're releasing a presence. You're releasing a, you're positioning things. 
So you're also positioning things. You're moving things with your with your songs and with your words. And God is just saying that that what you think, <laughs> what you think is like the big picture is still the small picture to him. He has a bigger what? and greater picture. He has a bigger and a greater picture for you because it's much bigger than what you think, honey. It's much, much bigger because there were dreams that you still have that you don't even talk about anymore because you think that they've died. And I hear the Lord saying that he's blowing on those embers and he's going to start that fire again. He said in the books, the movies, even the television, everything that you have asked for, he is going to give you. He is going to give you. Wow. <laughs> I'm just like, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Everything you have said is absolutely spot on. And um, I'm very honored. I'm very honored. And um, thank you for even having me on here to speak to all the people who um, need that encouragement because we've all had days where we didn't know how we were going to make it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the honest truth. And um, we all walk in truth, yeah? Yes, truth we do. Love. Yes. That's what we do. Yes, and we do. Support one another. Supporting yep. one another is vital in this in this day and age because we all want to kind of break everyone down, you know, get them down to that level where they're not doing what they're believed to do. But I, I just can't be like that. Yep. Anyone that comes into contact with me will will want to, to take life by force and, and do what God has told them to do. I, It's just no other way. So I'm very grateful for your time. Oh, thank well, you. thank you. And thank you for coming on. Remember, guys, if you'd like to reach out to Daniela, you can actually go to her website. Remember to share this broadcast because there were such there were such nuggets of wisdom and truth that she shared. So you definitely want to share it with your friends. But thank you guys for tuning in. Next week, I have um, Jana and Eddie. To, um, they are actually from, uh, oh gosh, his last name is Ty. Kai grows, I think I'm not, I'm probably butchering it, but Yana, Yana and Eddie, and they're just adorable. So they're going to be on next week's show. So if you guys remember eight o'clock, touch by prayer, you can also go to my website, www.touchbyprayer, touchbyprayer.com. Thank you guys for tuning in. Remember to go out and touch someone. Good night. Amen. Bye.